Thanks for choosing Ward Laboratories for your ag testing needs. I'm Jordan Westengard, the QAQC manager here at Ward, and today I'm going to walk through the process of filling out sample submission sheets completely. Regardless of which type of sample you are sending in, there are five common components that need filled out on every form. Let's look at those now. First, you may have noticed some things have changed on our sample submission forms. We did this to clarify the submittal process. In the top left corner, you'll see the Bill to Account box. When filling this in, it's important to note that the name and address correspond to the account that is paying for the testing. Say you're part of an ag retailer, and they manage your samples after you've collected them. You'll want to list their account name and address. As for the phone numbers, listing your phone number will allow us to contact you in case of any questions we may have regarding your submission. Providing your email ensures the quickest way to receive your completed results. If your organization requires a PO number, please enter it here. We will continue on with the soil sample with recommendation sheet. You'll have noticed that there are two sheets for soil samples, with and without recommendations. Crop recommendations help producers understand how much fertilizer they will need to apply based on soil nutrient availability, the crop grown, and the anticipated yield. Did you know that crop recommendations from Ward Laboratories are always free? For this next section, we're going to keep using the soil sample with recommendation sheet to further explain the completed form. The sample information box allows you to record the date samples were taken, the grower, and the specific field ID that the samples came from. If you are submitting samples for yourself, you may leave the grower section blank. The next section will be all about your samples. First, we ask that you please not write in the For Lab Use column. We use that column in our in house login process. Next, for sample ID, this is an identifier you assign to your sample that helps you remember where the sample was taken. It can be anything that helps you remember. Sample depth is the depth at which you took your sample. We recommend taking samples at 0 to 6 inches or 0 to 8 inches. Just be sure you're consistent. For subsoil residual nitrate analysis, we recommend sampling to 24 or 36 inches. If sampling to meet local conservation requirements, be sure to check with that organization for specific depths. In the next three column groups, you may request recommendations for up to three crops and yield goals. One example would be the same crop with three different yield goals. You could also request different crops with respective yield goals. For the next column, please tell us whether or not you plan on irrigating this crop for the year. In the next column, you can tell us what the previous crop planted was. This helps us know whether nutrient credits should be given for leguminous crops. In the last column, please select which soil test you desire to be ran on your samples. Don't forget to use the scroll bar to see all the options. Below this section is a table listing all soil test packages and a short descriptor. You may use the comment section to list any relevant information for our experts to analyze your samples. If you're interested in finding out how to fill out different sample type sheets, please reference our other videos.